So for everybody that's looking to do a sermon, whether it is in church, for a small group, AY program, whatever it is that you're trying to do, I want to give you some quick tips on how you can make that sermon, how you can put it together, quick, easy, simple, but how you can also make it biblical and effective. So first of all, a uh, normal sermon for in a church is 25 to 30 minutes. Now, if you are a seasoned pastor, if you are people like love to hear your sermons, they're excited, then maybe you could take it from the 35 to 45 minute range, all right? But then normally 25 to 30 minutes is a sermon. But then also, if you're gonna do something for like a small group, that's where you're gonna see like 20 minutes or even the 15 minute like uh, devotional, right? Devotional. But now people may wonder, how, how do I put that together? How do I put that together? This is how you put it together. First, these are seven parts of a, a sermon that is very important. First, you're gonna have the attention or what we know as the introduction. Two, we're gonna have the situation or problem. Three, we're going to have the solution. Four, application. I got this one. This one is gonna be more like number five, but let's put four, let's put like main point. Okay. Five, application. Six, conclusion. Seven, appeal. Okay. So this is the parts of the sermon that I would say, it, this is how you put like a sermon together, straight to the point, but then now you think about like, um, now you wanna think about like timing, right? If this is gonna be, let's say you're doing it, typically let's do it for 25 to 30 minutes. I would say if you have that, then you wanna do like, this is like five minutes, right? Situation, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. All right, so let's go for 30 minutes. So the situation problem, you should be able to explain this in at least three minutes. Solution, you can give this, I would say like five minutes. Breaking down the main point, that should be about three minutes. So now where are we at? We're at 10, we're at 16 minutes, okay? Application, you wanna give that like five minutes. So now that's 5, 10, 15, plus 6, 21. Now conclusion, you want to wrap everything up with about appeal. We want to do that. You can make like a two-minute appeal. Okay. And then conclusion to wrap everything up, 15 plus 6, that's 21, 22, 23. Now we have seven minutes left. A conclusion to co conclude everything you could do a conclusion it's like you could do like five minutes okay so I think we're looking kind of good all right boom now when you title all this this should this should equal around 25 to 30 minutes 25 to 30 minutes okay so now you know the timing of everything now this is this is this is what typically helps me. I I start with my appeal first, and the appeal is more like a decision. Like, what decision do you want them to do? And based on what decision that you want them to do, it can it affects everything. So, like, let's say we're using the scripture Proverbs three five to six. Now, the decision is going to be based on, like, trust. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So it's talking about trust. And then, like, all right, first you want to talk about where you want to go. So this is, like, think about like an airplane. We're thinking about where we want to land the plane, what decision we want them to make. So I honestly think, like, you should work on this first. This is just an opinion. Is not is not the... Um, 
everybody does plan sermons differently. I'm just giving you a way that has really been a blessing to my life. And what I've noticed has been great to kind of direct where you're going with your sermon. All right. Then we always know there's a problem. All right. Boom. This is number two. That's what you want to work on, number two. And I'm going to use a different color for this one. So we want to use, if you want to see how you want to plan this out, and you can try this and see how it works. Number one, I would say you start well with the appeal first. Like know where you want to go with everything. Then number two is the problem. Like there's always a problem. And 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 you could when you think about the problem, I would say think about the great controversy. And between good versus evil. And like sin and like fallen man, how we have a fallen nature. And so if we're thinking about trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding, one of the things that I'm that's coming to mind is the fact that you know we don't trust in the Lord because we're disconnected from him. So I'm looking at the situation, but I'm looking at it from a perspective of the great controversy, good versus evil. And then what's next? Next, you want to look at like I would say the solution. So what's the solution to that, all right? And every time I look in the solution, I'm looking at, all right, not only what exactly I'm finding in the text, but I'm looking at, all right, how does like the Holy Spirit work within this, Jesus, because the solution is always in Jesus. So I'm looking at Jesus, I'm looking at how exactly does Jesus work through us for this solution to work? even for the biblical perspective. So you're even looking at the solution from the biblical biblical perspective here. And then that is going to help us relate to how it applies to us. The translation to audience today. Okay, so and, and all, again, this is after prayer. This is after knowing about the audience. This is after all these things. So when you look at the application, you're, you're seeing like, how does it apply to us now? So I would say like situation, solution. Okay, then I would say like application is number four. So how does it apply to us? After you're looking at the situation and the solution, now you're looking at what's the, the situation and solution for us today. This is so important. And this right here is what makes it relevant. It's so important. Like this is what makes it relevant. So you're going, you're starting off with your appeal. Next, you're going to a situation problem. Next, you're going to solution. Next, you're going to application. How is it, how is it relevant? And then after you get the attention situation of application appeal, now you're going to know what you want us to do. And then this is going to be more of like, now after that, you have all those points that come together, how it applies, what, what, and you have to appeal the decision. That's when you can work on your number six, number five, which is your main point. So I would say main point is number five. So then after you know your appeal, you know you have the problem, you find the solution, you know how it applies, you make the main point, then you can wrap it all up and conclude, which is number six. And then the last but not least, after you get all this together, you can kind of know where your sermon is going. Because many times when people are sitting in the church, they're wondering, where is this going? What's the point? Why am I here? Why is this relevant? How does this matter to me? And the way that you do that is you put a really powerful introduction together where this could be a story, testimony, biblical history. Like it could be it could be many different ways that you introduce the, the the sermon. This is so important. I'll put a key here. It's so important. All these parts are important, but definitely how you open the sermon. It, it, it keeps their attention. It sees like they, they, we have such a short attention span. Now, if they are not um, paying attention from the get-go, you can lose them. So you want to make sure your attention is powerful, but you want to make sure you also let them know where you're going. So you let them know where you're going so they know. And then they're going to be like, all right, I know where we're going. I want to hear what, how you impact this. So then that is number seven. That's what I would say you work on last after you have everything together because then you know where you're going you know how to guide this you know what's perfect for the audience now so all right you have this now how do you we get it into the minutes where it's organized 
this is where you have to know, all right, if I'm speaking for whether it be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or even 25 to 30 minutes or more, I get to gauge my time. This is where I get to say, all right, how much minutes do I spend on the attention? How much minutes do I spend on the situation? How much do I spend on the solution? How much do I spend on the main point? How much do I spend on the application? How much do I spend on the conclusion? And how much do I spend on the appeal? So this will kind of help you gauge how much minutes you spend on each. And then you could practice, then you could go over it time and time again, and then you can make sure you're staying within whether it's 25 to 30 minutes or even if you just have a 15 minute devotional. This is the simple way how to make sure that you're staying on point. It's biblical. You want to make sure that the solution is based on a Bible verse. You want to make sure that your main point is grounded in like the whole sermon, like your main point, you're revisiting that throughout the sermon. And you want to make sure that the problem is relevant. Like all of these things you want to make sure you want to make sure it applies to the audience. You want to make sure you conclude. Many times people, when we hear sermons, it doesn't wrap back up with all the ideas we're talking about because they'll just preach, 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 preach. And then they don't go back through why they are telling you what they tell you. So by the time you get to here, you get so much information that you're like, what? And you're confused. To stop the people from being confused, bring them back through their attention. You know, I opened up the story about trusting, but you know there's a problem with fear. We have fear today, but the solution is we need to trust in the Lord and not in our own understanding. In all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he's going to direct us step by step. Jesus as our example. So if we trust in the Lord and we always communicate with Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit working through us, he is going to direct the path through our life, the, the main point. Application, how does it apply? I told you about how it applies to you and in your daily walk. Now it's time to make a decision. Are you going to trust? Are you going to trust? That's my appeal to everyone today. Trust in the Lord. Now you're making an appeal with open arms. You're welcoming them. So, and we'll break down all these one by one, more by more. But this is just an overall of how you could put together a devotional thought, a sermon, still have it direct, still have it biblical, but still doing it in a timely manner so that you're making sure you're hit, hitting all your touch points and that you're, you are having a successful, powerful, biblical sermon.